Welcome to another review. This time I'm taking a look at the one, the only, the SH Monster Arts Godzilla 1964. This is the first Showa era monster in the SH Monster Arts line and it is one of the most popular suits. So let's take a look at whether or not this figure has the potential to become as legendary as the suit itself. So the sculpt on Godzilla 1964 is amazing. Yuji Sakai stopped at nothing to make this guy look amazing. So, as you'd expect from Godzilla normally, all of the little details for the skin are kept. You can see all the little bumps and all the little grooves. Even on the dorsal plates, all of that fine detail is kept. There are dorsal plates all the way to the tip of the tail, which looks astonishing. Little goji feet. Now let's take a look at the face. That looks like Godzilla 1964. Detailing in the mouth. Probably not going to get to see all of the fine little details, but you can see the teeth there. On the roof of the mouth, you can even see the little ridges and stuff there. Very nicely done. Very intricate on the details. Now, the paint. Pretty much have seen all the paint apps. You can see this spray on the chest here. It's very nicely done. It is accurate to the suit. Some think it's a little bit too much. I think it's fine. That same spray is found on the knees. And the dorsal plates are this grayish cream color. Looks very nice. It looks older, which is a nice touch. And one of the cool things about it is you can see the paint apps going all the way to the very tip of the tail for the dorsal plates. How cool is that? Bonus points for Godzilla 1964 would be that the nails match up to the color that was shown off on the prototype, which both Godzillas previously released, the original and Burning Godzilla, have a slight change in the color. Good job there. Last point about the sculpt and the paint. Back up to the head, the eyes. You can see it very clear as day in, in this one. The eyes are kind of like googly eyes in that there is a plastic cover over them. It really gives this nice detail of the figure having smoky eyes, much like the suit. So overall, in terms of sculpt and paint, this thing is all I could ask for out of a 1964 Godzilla. Bravo. Okay. Articulation. The head, feet, and the tail. So the mouth is on a ball joint. opens, closes, tilts to the side, and is in fact a very small ball joint. Mine likes to pop off. Not that big of a deal, but it happens every now and then. Okay, we're on. Head is attached to this portion of the neck on a ball joint. Nice range of movement. This piece of the neck doesn't really want to move. Feels like it's on a ball joint. But the base of the neck definitely is on a ball joint. So, this Godzilla can look down really, really well. For looking up, uh, not so much. He's already kind of looking at an angle anyway, even when neutral. 
kind of. So, <sighs> it's a shame you can't look straight up. But anyway, shoulders. They are on a ball joint. Though, it is a bit restrictive. On mine, at least. It's taken a while for them to loose up. Loosen up, so. Eh. Not as poseable on the shoulders as the older Godzillas are. Anyway, elbow is on a hinge. And it is attached to the bicep uh, on a peg. So there is a swivel that is added in. Though there's no direct cut for the bicep swivel, because as you can probably see here, that is actually just another piece of the sculpt. It's not an actual cutaway for a joint. The hands are on ball joints, as you can see here. Now, chest, abdomen area. It's on a double access ball joint. So Godzilla can get a lot of cool poses out of it. And the reason for this gap is that he can lean very for far forward. And if there was nothing there, it kind of looked really, really bad. I don't think that looks bad at all. Some people like to pick at nits, so. Something else for you, I guess. Now. Next up, these triangle cut joints here. The legs on Godzilla 1964 are different from the other Godzillas in the line. So, here's how it goes. These pieces here are actually articulated, and they can, they help the thighs to go out. So I am not actually moving the thighs at all. And when you, when you do that, when you stretch them out to their entirety, yeah, okay, there's a gap on the inside, but watch this. The thighs are actually attached to these triangle cut joints. So yeah, he has a lot of leg articulation. Thighs are connected here on a ball joint. So I guess this would be the hips. The knees are on your standard hinge all the other Godzillas are. The feet. They are attached on a ball joint. Not too much movement. Maybe mine's just stiff. Got them today. Probably not. And then the toe area is indeed on a ball joint, but there's not that much movement in them in terms of range. I mean, you can move it around as much as you want, but you're not going to get something like a figure art style of a toe bend there, which is okay. Now, the tail. <laughs> ball joint, 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 sculpt. So these four areas here at the tip of the tail are the only places on this tail that do not move. Yeah. 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 Tail is sweet. I love it. So in terms of articulation, Godzilla 1964 is the bomb. I'd have to say in some aspects, it is the most articulated Godzilla yet. Thumbs up. When Mothra vs. Godzilla was released, special effects for the Godzilla movies were using very different techniques. And at the time, this particular Godzilla had a smoky-ish, fog-ish breath. That's what it looked like instead of a beam. And the last Godzilla that we had released, that came with A-beam effect, was the Godzilla from Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. So, you'd probably be expecting, what does this Godzilla come with? Probably that unique beam effect, atomic breath, 
that this Godzilla would use. Well, drum roll. He comes with nothing. Completely bare bones. This Godzilla comes with literally nothing else. In the clamshell packaging, it's just this. There's no space for the tail. Nothing. Very sad. But if you do have the first release Godzilla, normal Godzilla, not any other particular ones, because not Comic-Con Explosion or what have you, you do get that Heisei era beam effect. And this will be my first time plugging it in, but I've seen it before, and it's not necessarily horrible. Kind of works, but it just doesn't feel right, you know? Oh well, maybe we'll get an accessory pack sometime down the line. And Mosugoji will get his beam, but until then, he gets nothing. When looking at the Monster Arts 1964 Godzilla, the first thing you're going to notice is that he is indeed smaller than the rest of the line. So unfortunately, he does not scale too well with the other releases. So let's take a look at exactly how he fits in with the rest of the line instead of just this Godzilla. As you can see here, I have some choice examples from the Monster Arts line, and yeah, he's a bit on the small side. Not totally out of scale, as in, oh my god, he's a shrimp, he doesn't fit in with anything. But he is noticeably smaller. So it's a bit of a disappointment. So if you were looking to have some sort of fantasy match between a Showa Godzilla and Space Godzilla, and da -da -da, unfortunately, you're not going to have it. However, there is one particular line that this Godzilla fits in really well with. And as you can see here, this Godzilla fits in really, really well with the sci-fi Rebel Tech line of Toho Monsters. A little bit too big, especially in comparison to Mothra. Mothra is supposed to be huge compared to Godzilla, but it works. So if you have the sci-fi Rebel Tech Toho Monsters, and you're thinking about, eh, I should probably get a Godzilla to fit in. This guy. Right here. Dead center. Get him. Fits in near seamlessly. No problems at all. Buy it. Skip it. Pick it up cheap for used. Well, I gotta say that I really didn't care for the 1964 suit. When it was revealed, I was kind of thinking, ah, uh, yay, for Showa, but I couldn't have been 1954, 68, 55 would have been nice, but a suit I really didn't care about. And the months go by, and more pictures show up from different showroom displays, and San Diego Comic Con, and the final product release. I gotta say, I love this thing. Hasn't necessarily changed my impressions of the suit, but really, I haven't been that excited for a figure in a while. Except, you know, of course, by Lante, but that's a story for a different day. And I was able to pick this guy up cheap on Amazon. I got it for 55 shipped. So, I really can't complain about it. Yeah, he's small. But, maybe that's something they're going to go for Showa era, maybe different scale. Kind of don't like that. I like my other Showa monsters to, you know, mix and mingle with my Heisei stuff, but... I guess it works. But that small size does mean that my Rebel Tech Mothra has a playing buddy.
Yo, in there, cute. He's a bit pricey. $64.99 MSRP. No accessories. But you have to figure sculpt, paint, articulation, and he's a web exclusive. One production run, made to order, and then another production set aside for Bluefin. Another amount. Yeah. I recommend this entirely. The only thing I would have to say to improve on this thing would be shoulder articulation. It's a bit lacking to me. And accessories. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Oh, it's another Godzilla. It's just Godzilla with a different hat. Do I really need to have this one in my collection? Well, I own all the different Godzillas in this line, and I have to say... Just like each individual suit, this Godzilla, the 1964 Monster Arts, has its own quirks about it that definitely will make its own unique spot in your collection.